Hi, welcome to Finding Myself Through Obesity. My name is Alicia Black and we are on episode 12. And this is the very last episode of the Emotional Weight series. For any new listeners out there, um, when I started my podcast, I knew there were emotional issues that I needed to dig into about myself, and so I decided to make a list of things that I didn't feel good about in my life. The whole purpose of starting this podcast was to learn how to release my emotional weight, and what better way to do that than to dive into all the ways that I'm unhappy, or all the ways that I really desire to change in my life, right? So that list of 10 things turned into the emotional weight series. I was really surprised about how much I've learned about myself. You really should try it if you are in a place where you are eating or have some kind of addiction and you don't know why you're trying to escape because I have learned so much and I would love for you to come on this journey with me. But now we're on the last episode of this series and this episode is all about letting go of expectations of what I thought my life would look like. And it's perfect that I'm talking about expectations this week because last week, which was Thanksgiving, I was so busy and I was super tired and I didn't really feel that good. But since I committed to doing an episode every single week, I sat down and tried to hurry through an episode late Thanksgiving night so I wouldn't let myself down. And as I was recording the episode about expectations, I realized that I had set yet another expectation for myself. And I could have edited that rushed podcast episode, but instead I wanted to show myself that it is okay to change the plan if I need to. Sometimes we need a break and that's okay. So I chose not to upload it, but not without judging myself first, of course. I felt like I let myself down and I let my listeners down, but I am working through it right now. And this morning I had another coaching session with my mentor and angel, And she was able to help me get centered again, which I am so grateful for. When I had the expectation and then didn't follow through, I fully judged myself and started to have self-doubt. And then, of course, here comes fear of failure creeping into my mind. It's amazing how my brain wants to offer me these thoughts that cause me so much pain. I was having thoughts like, here you go again, not following through and not doing what you said you're going to do. And also I had the thought, what if I fail and I've put myself out there again? I also had the thought, who do you think you are, Alicia, to start a podcast? What do you really have to offer and why will people listen to you? Whew. <laughs> I'm actually breathing through this moment again as I'm repeating those thoughts. So back to the subject of expectations. We all have expectations, right? I am learning that expectations are joy killers, really. And my whole life, I've had huge, unrealistic expectations of myself and those around me, especially my husband. Expectations can really hurt us because we can't predict what's going to happen in the future. We can only do our best right now. Expecting too much really sets us up for disappointment. So many people suffer in relationships because of the expectations that we put on other people and also the expectations we put on ourselves. And I know this firsthand. (laughs) So Tony Robbins, he says, we all have expectations, but expectations are from the mind and they're created from the mind and the heart knows better. So I love that quote because that is exactly what angels teaching that we really do know the truth. If we will go to our heart, we are vessels of truth. Tony Robbins also teaches you to trade your expectation for appreciation and then you will see the world change. Instead of having an expectation of your husband or of your children, think of all the things that they do for you and and have appreciation for who they are and what they do for you. Um, The expectations that I had for my life were fully unrealistic. It's really no wonder I was so unhappy and wanting to turn to food constantly. Every single girl has a dream to marry her Prince Charming, right? That prince is going to take care of her for the rest of her life, and then, of course, they're going to live happily ever after. I mean, I was 18 years old when I got married. I remember being so excited to get married. I thought it was going to be so much fun. We're going to be living together. Oh, man. (laughs) It's kind of interesting to look back at how unrealistic my expectations of what grown-up life would be like. So here is a personal experience that I had with my expectations. Um, My husband and I were just married, and one night we had this disagreement. And I remember crying to him and saying, this is never going to work. 
I, I never thought that, that we'd be fighting. So keep in mind, I never saw my parents fight. Um, and so here I was crying to my new husband saying, how, how are we ever going to make this marriage work? Like if we're fighting, how is this ever going to work? And I remember he just looked at me with the most confused look. And he said to me, this is not a fight. We're just having a disagreement. And then I said, I just remember going, oh, oh, it isn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he said, no, we're not even yelling at each other. And so it's just funny because it just shows how naive I was. And I didn't know how to handle anything negative. Another experience I had was that my dad warned me before I got married that my husband would struggle going to church. So whenever he wouldn't go to church with me, I would build up all this resentment. I remember seeing wives with their husbands. I would build up all this resentment and I would come home and be so angry. And I was wanting so bad to prove my dad wrong. And so a lot of my pain is coming from those expectations of what I thought life should be, what I thought my husband should be, what I thought my dad thought my husband should be. And also all of the reasons I didn't want to take responsibility for my life had to do with the expectations I had for myself and the expectations I felt like my parents wanted from me too. Here's a tip that I read on the internet. If we find ourselves with expectations and it starts to bring up resentment, you can bring yourself in the present moment by taking deep breaths and starting to notice your five senses. So even something simple as feeling the warm sun come through your window, smelling your favorite candle or hearing the birds outside will help you get into the present moment. And then once you're in the present moment, you're going to be able to feel your heart you're going to be more in tune with your heart and bring appreciation to the moment instead of thinking about the expectation you had. So I'm going to try this. I really like that tip. And then I love what Tony Robbins says. Things that are going wrong are always available to you, but so are things that are going right. And we get to find what we are looking for. So I love that. Um, I had another quote that I loved. Unspoken expectations are premeditated resentments. And that goes along with you know, what I shared about my husband and going to church every single week and the expectation I thought that he was going to be this way and he gets to choose whatever way he wants to go and I should love him through that just like he loves me through my moments. I just think that I need to be more realistic with my expectations. So just like this quote, be realistic with your expectations. I mean, I'd really love to cuddle a unicorn, but it ain't going to happen. I thought that was a funny one. <laughs> Especially with all my expectations I had of always wanting to be happy. I never wanted to fail. I never wanted to make mistakes. All of these things that I had expectations for in my life, they were not even reality. And all that those expectations were doing for me was causing me more pain and unhappiness. Another quote that I read was, You are your own worst enemy. If you can learn to stop expecting impossible perfection in yourself and in others you may find the happiness that has always eluded you. So I would really love to hear what you all think about expectations. So follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and let's have a conversation about expectations and what you think about the subject. I think there are still more things that I need to learn about expectations. And I know there will be a lot more things coming up to the surface for me as I go on this journey. I am noticing that I'm not quite as hungry. I have had a lot of fear come up and I've been able to let go a lot of that fear and then my hunger goes down, but then the fear comes up again and I'm constantly learning about myself and how I cope. And it's actually fascinating. Um, there's a lot of patterns that, that continually come around again and so you start really getting to know who you are and uh, what your motivations are and things. It's really cool to see the proof that when we're able to step into an emotion, and we learn to sit with it, breathe through it, and let it pass us by, then we will get back to our place of center, of body, mind, and spirit. And then the last thing is we really have to realize that our journey is going to go up and down. This is something I've really had to remind myself. I will never have like a straight line experience. Even in this journey of mine, I have to catch myself all the time saying things again that I've already learned in the past. Like, I'll never be perfect. <laughs> And so obviously I still have the, I don't want to make a mistake mentality. I have to be able to sit with those moments and be able to love myself through them. 
and to practice accepting what is and be okay with what is. I feel like I have some of the answers. I know there's a lot more that I'm going to be learning. And so I'm just going to be putting the answers that I do have into practice and keep going to God and asking him what more is there. And uh, also being able to be forgiving of myself, being willing to learn, uh, to push myself to grow and challenge myself to feel what I need to feel. And so that's what I'm, I'm going to be doing in this journey of mine. And I would invite you to come along with me. I hope that all of you had an amazing Thanksgiving. I did. My daughter and her husband were able to come, and I love spending time with my family. I hope you guys enjoyed your family too. I really do appreciate you being here. I appreciate you listening and showing your continued support on this journey of mine. And I just wanted to say thank you. So we will see you guys next week. <music>